Hello, my name is Arnold DeLorem, and this is part five of a series of video on time frequency analysis of EEG time series. This part is about using the EEGNAP software package to actually perform spectral decompos decompositions. Here we assume you've loaded a continuous EEGNAP dataset and that it contains channel locations. Then you would go to the plot menu and select channel, spectra, and map. Once you do that, a window pops up asking for more parameters. Most of these parameters are self-explanatory. If you, uh, you can get more details about these parameters if you select the help menu uh, on this interface, or you can also look at the eGNAP tutorial. So you simply press OK, and this type of plot uh, is the one you would obtain with each trace representing one electrodes and scalp topographies plotted at the selected frequencies. So this is the power spectrum of the data using the P-Walsh method we've talked about in part two. Importantly, here you can change the parameter of the Welsh method, such, such as the amount of zero padding and the overlap of the windows by typing them in the edit box. Also, if you look at the MATLAB command line, which you cannot see here, you can see details about the Welsh method parameters. On this slide, we're going to uh, plot a time frequency decomposition. Here, we're plotting the time frequency decomposition of an ICA component, but you can plot time frequency decomposition of data channels as well. In this case, the default is set to using three cycles per, per wavelets at the lowest frequency and a scale expansion factor of 0 0.5. On the same row where you select the wavelet parameters, you can instead select uh, Fourier transform by checking the checkbox. Here we have selected to plot component one. If you look on the MATLAB command line, you can get more information about the number of cycles at the lowest and highest frequencies. You can also get information about which frequencies are being processed. In this case, 23 frequencies from 5.9 Hertz to 50 Hertz. This is the plot you obtain. On the top, you have the event-related spectral perturbation, or ERSP, and on the bottom, you have the intertrial coherence or ITC. In this component, we can see blocking of 20 Hertz frequency band activity after stimulus presentation and increase in five to eight Hertz frequency band activity. For the ITC, we can see broadband activity at about 100 milliseconds, which is usually, which usually indicates a sharp peak present in most trials, so a true ERP peak. This is because, as we saw in one of the previous presentations, we need all the frequencies to model a sharp peak in the input signal. Then we can also have uh, ISTC activations at frequencies observed in the power spectrum, although at somewhat different latencies. You can choose to mask for significance here at 0 0.01. Uh, now that if you mask for significance, I strongly advise that you correct for multiple comparison by checking the FDR checkbox in the same row. This is the plot you obtain, and now the pure green color indicates time frequency regions where the spectral estimate is not significant. As for the spectrum, you can also change zero padding. This is usually only valid when using with Fourier transforms, but when you use wavelet, the function simply increase the number of frequencies as if you were using a Fourier transform. So for this function, uh, we use what we call the pad ratio parameter, which simply multiplies the number of frequencies. So in the previous slide, we had 23 frequencies. So if we have a pad ratio of two, we have twice the number of frequencies, in this case, 46 instead of 23. This is how the plot looks like for a pad ratio of one and a pad ratio of two. And you can see how the time frequency image is smoother on the right compared to the left. This is now just plotting the intertrial coherence or ITC. When plotting ITC, there are additional options that allow you, for example, to plot the phase of the ITC in addition to its amplitude. So when you use the plot phase options, you're now able to see the phase of the ITC. You may uh, look at presentation number four in this series uh, for what I mean in terms of phase and amplitude of the ITC. Finally, it's also possible to use custom frequencies. For example, here I selected frequency one, two, three, four, five, six hertz, and the same number for cycles. 
and this is arbitrary so I do not recommend to use this value necessarily. Uh, for publication purposes, I usually use log space frequencies and linear increase in the number of cycles, which I cap to 8 above 45 Hz. I cap the number of cycles at 8 because most articles use 8 or sometimes 12 cycles wavelet to study high gamma band power, so it would not make sense to continue to increase the number of cycles above 45 Hz. If you want to use the same parameter, you can simply copy and paste these two lines in your script or copy and paste uh, the values in the edit box in the graphic interface. So now let's run a simple EG uh, example in EGLab with some of the included example datasets. For the spectrum, I'm going to use a continuous dataset. After loading it, I go to Channel Spectra and Maps and simply press OK. We can see a nice peak in the alpha frequency range at 10 Hz, uh, which is present in most subjects, even when they have their eyes open. And here you see the window size is 128 samples, so one second, which gives me a resolution of 1 Hz. I can also increase the frequency resolution by either zero padding or increasing the size of the window. Here I'll use a window of size 256 hertz, so I get uh, of size 256, so I get a resolution of half a hertz. And you can see how smoother uh, it is now. So now let's move to time frequency decomposition. For this, I'm going to import the other example that I set, which already has data epochs uh, extracted. As a reminder, for both ERSP and ITCs, we need uh, data epochs. Now I go to the menu to plot time frequency decompositions. I will plot the time frequency decomposition of component 1 and simply keep all the defaults. To get more help, you can press the help button. And this provides information for each of the options of the graphic interface, as you can see here. So I press OK. And this is the time frequency decomposition for component one. We can also mask for significance here at 0 0.05 with false discovery rate correction for multiple comparison. Are these few negative pixel real changes? We can increase the threshold for significance to 0 0.01 and also increase the number of frequencies. So it takes a little longer to compute because of the higher resolution and higher threshold for significance, but you can see that these negative blobs uh, are still present. So this is the end of this presentation. This was the last part of this series, and I want to thank you for your attention.